My soul proclaims the greatness, the greatness of the Lord. My spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. For he has looked with mercy on his lowly servant girl. And from now on the world will call me blessed. For holy is his name, holy is his name. Give glory and honor. Well, good morning, everyone, and a very warm welcome to our 11 o'clock Sunday service on this, the Sunday, the 7th of June. And the eagle-eyed amongst you will have noticed that our altar frontal has changed to green and my stole has changed to green, which can mean only one thing, that this is Trinity Sunday. So a very warm welcome to you all. Shall we just have a few moments quiet before we begin our service? Today on Trinity Sunday, we worship God who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit, Creator, Redeemer and Sustainer. We have reason to celebrate because we too are invited into this divine relationship. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. We have come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us recognise God's presence with us now. As God's people, we have gathered. Let us worship God now together, across the miles yet joined. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in us the fire of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, for our first hymn this morning, we are going to go to Winchester Cathedral and we're going to sing together, How Great Thou Art.
let us now hear the call to put our lives in order, that what is broken in us may be mended by God's grace. So in the light of Jesus, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins. We say together, Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who were once dead, but now have life through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins, restore you in his image, to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let everything be said and done in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God through Jesus Christ. Sing psalms, hymns and sacred songs, let us sing to God with thankful hearts. Open our lips, Lord, and we shall praise your name. Our first Bible reading on this Trinity Sunday is taken from the book of Isaiah, starting at chapter 40, verse 12. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and marked off the heavens with a span, enclosed the dust of the earth in a measure and weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in a balance? Who has directed the spirit of the Lord or as his counsellor has instructed him? Whom did he consult for his enlightenment and who taught him the path of justice? Who taught him knowledge and showed him the way of understanding? Even the nations are like a drop from a bucket and are accounted as dust on the scales. See, he takes up the isles like fine dust. Lebanon would not provide fuel enough, nor are its animals enough for a burnt offering. All the nations are as nothing before him. They are accounted by him as less than nothing and emptiness. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known, have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading this morning is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 13, beginning at verse 11. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
for our second hymn this morning. We're going to sing Holy, Holy, Holy. Where has the time gone? They do say it flies when you're having fun. We end this evening with a rousing and inspirational hymn of thanksgiving. Clergyman Martin Rinkart wrote this enduring prayer nearly 400 years ago for his children to say before bedtime. It's a wonderful expression of praise and gratitude. From the Royal Albert Hall, and from all of us in Songs of Praise, thank you very much and goodbye.
Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As I think I have confessed to you all before, I am an absolute fan of musical theatre. From Cats, but please don't mention the film, all the way to Billy Elliot and on to Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. I wonder if any other fans of musical theatre are joining us today. And I wonder if you can recognise where these next words come from. Words, words, words. I'm so sick of words. If you're in love, show me. Sing me no song, read me no rhyme. Don't waste my time. Show me. Now, I hope that some of you might have guessed that this is the cry of Eliza Doolittle in My Fair Lady. And she could well be speaking of all the many words that will be spoken today by preachers across the world trying to explain the Holy Trinity. The trouble is, none of the clever words which will be spoken today will actually work. There are innumerable attempts at an explanation. You'll hear things like, it's like a three-leafed clover, or three things that are the same but different, like ice, water and steam, like three-in-one shampoo, or like it's how one person can be three different persons at the same time, a daughter, a mother and a sister. The truth is, though, that even if we could find the best formula for the Trinity, it wouldn't help us, and chances are it would probably be heretical. So the invitation today is not to find a formula to explain the Trinity, but to respond to the nature of God who is Trinity. The Trinity tells us that God is, for want of a better word, a community of perfect, unbroken personal relationships. God is love and love cannot exist except in a relationship. The Gospel reading for this Trinity Sunday is at the very end of Matthew's Gospel, commonly referred to as the Great Commission. It takes place on the days after the resurrection, and the disciples are still desperately trying to make sense of what has happened. Jesus has been appearing to many people, but faith in him is not straightforward. Matthew makes clear that even in this final resurrection appearance to these 11 disciples, some worshipped, but some doubted. It is into that mix of faith and doubt that Jesus speaks these extraordinary words. He tells them that he has all authority in heaven and on earth. 
nowhere, no one, and nothing is outside of his jurisdiction. And he gives them two things, a task and a promise. And these two things go together. He asks them that going and making disciples of all nations should be their first task. And interestingly, Matthew makes no mention of people being required to have faith before baptism. The thrust of Matthew's gospel has always been about the inclusion of all people in the gospel. Jesus is not just for the Jews who believed in him, he is for the Gentiles, and that means everyone. So his disciples are to baptise people in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Trinity. And most contemporary scholars see this baptismal formula as authentic. It used to be assumed that the words had been added in by the early church. However, most wonderfully of all, Jesus gives them a promise. He will be with them always. In baptism, through God's great grace, people come into this divine relationship that is God. And it doesn't end there. Loved eternally by God, we are to love one another and so to reflect the image of God in us. This is the great commission, that by our lives all people may know that they too are invited into God's great love. We know that we are made in the image of God, and that means we belong in relationship. None of us has ever been designed to be self-sufficient. We need each other to be fully human. We must all love and be loved in return. This is one of the reasons why we need the church because the church puts us into relationship with others. Each one of us exists to be a channel of God's love, a channel of God's love to others, even those whom we find most difficult to be with. A perfect church would be a community of people in perfect relationship with each other, and it would be continually inviting others in. That way we would perfectly reflect God, the Holy Trinity. But of course, we fail. And that's why we have a confession and absolution at the beginning of every service. To mend what is broken, as Paul urges the Corinthians to do. Jesus calls us to know the eternal love and presence of God from the security of the knowledge of the love of God, who is with us always, while he calls us to love all people. It is a tremendous commission and an even more tremendous promise. And it is not, as Eliza Doolittle would be very pleased, it's not just clever words. This is life in all its fullness. Amen. Let us pray. We bind unto ourselves today the strong name of the Trinity. By invocation of the same, the three in one and one in three, of whom all nature has creation. Eternal Father, Spirit Word, praise to the Lord of our salvation. Salvation is of Christ the Lord. Amen. We now affirm our faith in Christ Jesus, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God but made himself nothing, taking the form of a slave. He was born in human likeness 
He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. We intercede for others in the quiet of our hearts. Loving God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we come before you today celebrating your presence in our lives and our world. We believe in you, we trust in you, we hope in you. We ask you to hear even the unspoken prayers hidden deep within our hearts. We pray for our bishops this morning, for Robert, Nick and Jackie, and all religious leaders, that they will be filled with the love of the Father, the self-sacrifice of the Son, and the compassion of the Holy Spirit, as they work to inspire hope and trust during this global pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for everyone in international, national and local leadership during this period of COVID-19 decision-making. We pray that they might use wisdom and compassion as they discern the way forward. We pray for families, teachers and small children as schools begin to reopen. We pray that they might all be safe and free from illnesses. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are grieving the loss of a loved one, a friend, a neighbour, a customer or colleague. We pray that they might find the comfort and support that they need and that those who have died might be enjoying eternal life with God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for farmers and growers of food who are coping with the effects of an unusually wet spring, a lockdown, and now a long period of exceptionally dry weather. We pray that God will bless and reward their efforts to bring food and all the great things into our lives and homes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all frontline workers who have tried so hard to keep us safe and supplied with our many practical needs during these past few months. We pray that God will bless them and reward them for their care and generosity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those in our community who we know to be ill at this time. We pray especially for Jeff, Alan, Pete, Richard Burry, Georgie MacArthur, Graham, Margaret, Claudia, Job and Steve Cox. Heavenly Father, we ask you to console them as they may be healed in body, in mind, or in spirit. 
we ask that your grace will be upon them and your loving care will reach out to all those who may be in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray this morning for the people of the United States at this time, as the country mourns the loss of George Floyd. We pray that peace might be restored and a way found to ease the current tensions, allowing people of all colours and creeds to live and work together in harmony. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Blessed Trinity of life and love, be the centre of our lives, be the focus of our love. Amen. Our collect for today on this Sunday, the 7th of June, Trinity Sunday. Let us pray. Holy God, faithful and unchanging, enlarge our minds with the knowledge of your truth and draw us more deeply into the mystery of your love, that we may truly worship you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. We are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We say together, Faithful God, may we who share in this time of worship glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, our salvation and hope, who reigns as Lord now and for ever. Fill us, good Lord, with the spirit of love, and as you have fed us with your presence, so make us one in heart and mind, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. We say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. For God said, I will not leave you or forsake you, so we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper, I will not fear. It is the Lord who goes before you, he will be with you, he will not leave you or forsake you, do not be dismayed. And we say together, please God, we ask that we can meet together in church again soon. Amen. Now for our final hymn this morning, we're going to go to St Albans Church in Bristol and we're going to sing Go Forth and Tell.
over this coming week as we continue to stay alert, to control the coronavirus, to protect the NHS and to save lives. My continuing prayer for you all will be that you will all stay safe, stay well, stay connected and stay firm in your faith. Amen. Shall we now bow our heads as we pray for God's blessing upon us. May the grace of God the Father give you strength when you are weary. May the peace of God the Son calm your fears. And may the fellowship of God the Holy Spirit surround your days. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and those whom you love and pray for, now and forever. Amen. Our service is now ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. I hear babies cry and I watch them go.